Hey guys, what's up? So, uh, I... Oh yeah, so we are back on to, um... Turning Cones. <laughs> I wanted to, uh... I wanted this, uh, week to be about the bottom bracket, but I had ordered some metal bar, uh, round bar, and it hasn't arrived yet, so... We're turning cones. <laughs> this is something I knew that I'd have to do at some point. Um, I wasn't sure I was going to uh, make a video on it, but I figured I would because I had this idea to use um, this metal rod here. And basically I'm going to skewer that um, cone, the existing cone, onto this metal rod. So I'm doing that to save material and I really don't want to remachine that whole this whole cone all over again. So uh, here I am um, using the hammer to but well, it's not tapping at this point. I'm just whacking it into this thing. Funny, I think the hammer is like the first tool that you learn to use as a kid. And once you learn, once you start using a hammer, it's like the only tool you think there is. So that that thought came to mind after I was hitting it like way too hard with the hammer. I'm like, why am I doing this? Um, I have this press, so I went and got the press, and we'll see if this works out. worked okay so I skewered up the second cone and got it all set up got it in the chuck and then this happened so if we go back in time back in time and you can see that uh, it bends right here so when I was pushing the rod out of the cone it bent at this time. Alright, so goodbye messed up cone. Hello new cone! So I'm turning a brand new cone. And uh, wow, lessons learned. Uh, don't try to cut corners. Uh, don't use a skinny little rod to try and turn a cone that's about an inch and a half diameter. And uh, rigidity is really important. So I think I got really lucky with that uh, that first cone I turned on that rod. Uh, all it took, really, all it would have taken was for the uh, the tool to bite into the cone and bend that rod just a little bit, and it pretty much would have screwed up the whole operation. So 
I just got really lucky. So, uh, yeah, I don't think I'll ever try that again. Okay, it's parting time. So I am, uh, got pretty, got better at this. I watched a video, uh, on, uh, Tom Techniques, the channel, YouTube channel, and, uh, yeah, he pretty much explains how to do this, and it totally works. So you, you, uh, turn the piece at about half the speed you would normally, uh, cut it at, and, uh, use lots of lubricant. In this case, I'm using WD-40. Uh, I think a thicker lubricant would be better, and I wouldn't need to keep... I was pretty much drenching the thing, because uh, WD-40 is pretty light. Alright, here it is. Uh, pretty clean cut. Now I'm uh, making a plunge cut on the arms. This is so the key can fit into the hole. And I'm setting the Z-axis to zero. So I want to make a cut 5.6 millimeters down. So as I was cutting, I was watching the, the depth and something did not seem right. Uh, there's definitely something wrong. Can you guys see what is wrong here? So I wanted to make a 5.6 millimeter cut and my digital readout was set to inches so <laughs> I was watching the readout and it was you know it wasn't even hitting one and I'm like what's wrong with this thing so it was a good thing I was keeping an, an eye on the cut because I was watching the cut and it's like it's cutting pretty deep why is this what's going on here so I stopped everything and I set it realized that it was set to inches so I set it to millimeters and now Everything's cool. Alright, that's it for this week. Next week we're going to work on the bottom bracket section of the jig. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later.